Hello everybody, NGS here and welcome back to Madoka Magica episode 11, the penultimate one. Uh, I ate some breakfast, graded some papers, made myself a cup of white tea and found a pentagram pendant among my possessions. I'm ready for the arrival of the Valpurgisnacht. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little bit afraid getting uh, into this episode, getting into those two final episodes, really. Uh, both because they are the final episodes, so the height of whatever we witnessed so far, well, that's only gonna be incremented, increased in the finale. And also because of the previous episode that showed us a lot of parallels between uh, Madoka and Homura. And uh, some that weren't parallels, but they have all the signs of being ones, of not being parallels yet. Uh, like the scene where Madoka sacrifices herself, or rather, Madoka goes into battle against Valpurgisnacht, leaving Homura alone, and Homura uh, makes a wish to become a magical girl to help Madoka, to save Madoka. I can see a parallel to that being drawn, where it's Homura who goes against the Valpurgisnacht, as she said she's going to do. She's going to go against Valpurgisnacht alone, and uh, Madoka being the one who makes a wish to save Homura. And perhaps now it's going to be Madoka chasing around the timelines, trying to save Homura from being a magical girl. Magical girl. I don't know, would be kind of cool, but we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily, we don't exactly uh, have the time for that, do we? Um, another way <coughs> I can see it going is, um, and I think this is a safe assumption, that uh, Homura will just die, that's what's going to happen, and uh, that will push Madoka to make her wish and fix everything, quote-unquote. Well, no quotations needed, really. Fix everything uh, with her wish. Uh, fix the whole deal with with um, entropy, uh, with magical girls having to surrender their souls, uh, with uh, witches, with the endless cycle of magical girl witch, magical girl witch, with the exploitation by the incubators. All that stuff. Because we know from Kyube, who is kind of sort of reliable source of information uh, that her magic, her wish, has the potential to make her omnipotent. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, also we know that from the previous episode, we know that uh, no single witch can uh, fight Valpurgisnacht. No single witch can win against Valpurgisnacht. So we kind of know that Homura's efforts are kind of, sort of, doomed to fail right from the get-go. She's powerful, sure, she has time magic, but she doesn't have, like, combat magic, quote-unquote. Again, she has guns, she has pipe bombs, she has grenades and whatnot, but can't just, I don't know, shoot a magic arrow at an enemy and, uh, and be done with it. Although, that might actually be a benefit. That might actually be a benefit, because if magical girls usually just attack, uh, let's say they attack and evade with their magic, right? They can blink from one place to another, for example, or block an attack with a magic shield, and then they attack with magic, with magic bolts, magic guns, magic spears, whatever. They use magic both on offense and defense. Hamura doesn't use magic on offense. Her gem doesn't get dirtied when she attacks, because she just attacks with a gun or a grenade, not with magic. I wonder if that's going to become relevant. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's curious. That's curious. I wonder if, perhaps not in this series, in this season, maybe in the movies, uh, maybe in the spin-off thing, Magia Record, I think it's called, 
I have no clue what whatever Magia record is about, so it's gonna be a complete surprise to me. Maybe it's gonna be explored a little that, hey, maybe magical girls can just fight with a regular sword, not a magic sword, or a regular gun, not a magic gun, and preserve magical energy that way. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Uh, but yeah, in any case, uh, we also learned uh, that the whole situation with Madoka and the witches is kind of catch-22, because um, if she wins against the witch, if she wins against the Valpurgis Nacht, it might just so happen that she herself will turn into a witch, and when Madoka turns into a witch, well, that's a world-ending scenario, as we've learned from Kyubei. It's not something that can be defeated, it's not something that can be overcome. Whenever Madoka becomes a witch, the world, the humanity, ends. Period. No saving that. And the only possible save from that would be, of course, Homura's magic, Tiny Wime shenanigans. Uh, although we don't know if the timeline, like, stops existing uh, when Homura just blinks into another one, or does the timeline continue. Probably does, depending if, if we're looking at it from, like, a fractal perspective of time, where Homura just jumps between branches, or is it, like, a linear linear time where Homura just veers, veers off from it and then rejoins it at different points? Is it linear? Is it circular? Is it fractal? I don't know. I don't think they're going to talk about that in depth. Mm. But yeah. And uh, in the previous episode, we also got uh, explanations for Homura. A lot of explanations, actually. Uh, why she's so standoffish, why she didn't try to convince uh, people, why she didn't try to tell them the truth. Right? Trying to convince them never worked, from what we've seen. Uh, Revealing the truth, well, when Mami learned the truth about the nature of magical girls, she, she committed murder-suicide. So, yeah, not the best ways to go about it. Uh, in the end, uh, every time Madoka eventually becomes a magical girl, so whatever Homura would do, that wouldn't have changed. So she went through all those iterations. Uh, from what I heard... Uh, in some interview, uh, the creator of the show said that there's that Homura has been through like a hundred iterations, or something thereabouts. So yeah, if she tried all those uh, ways, explored all those different ways of potentially stopping Madoka from becoming a Mahu Shoujo and nothing worked, well, she's not going to be trying them anymore. It's going to be interesting to see how exactly will this timeline be different. Well, the first major difference, of course, is that Homura managed to keep Madoka from becoming a Mahu Shoujo for this long. And in no other timeline from what we were shown has Madoka stayed human for this long. So, maybe Homura is close to solving the issue. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I don't remember if there's been anything in the previous episode that's worth mentioning. And if I encountered something during the watching of this episode, then I'm surely going to be reminded of that. And I'm going to mention that. Uh, but as far as my memory serves, we mostly learned about Homura, about uh, the consequences of losing to Valpurgisnacht, about the consequences of winning to Valpurgisnacht, uh, about all the different iterations. And uh, the previous episode also served as a little bit of a downtime, although not really. It, it was a very uh, Madoka Magica kind of a downtime. Um, many anime follow the structure of intense thing and the climax and then a bit of a downtime. And then after downtime, shit goes wild again. Right? So you're fighting against an army of demons, then you have a beach episode, and then, oh no, the demon lord himself starts attacking. Right? That kind of structure. But Madoka Magica is so incredibly dense that even with a downtime episode, it didn't feel like a downtime episode. <laughs> but it was. For all intents and purposes, it was. 
supposed to give us a brief moment of respite before whatever is going to happen in this episode and in the finale. So, without further ado, subs, you're gonna need them to follow along, sound, I'm gonna need it to hear what's going on, and support, support my channel if you will, monetarily, Patreon, throw links in the description below, and if you don't want to spend any money, uh, you don't have to, just share my content, spread the word, it really does help a lot as well. Uh, but if you do support me on Patreon, you get early access to Madoka and other stuff like that, so it might be worth it in the long run. Uh, and with that out of the way, we can start watching episode 11, the penultimate one, of Puella Magi Madoka Magica in 3, 2, 1, go. Hello, Kyubei. Yep, exactly what happened. <laughs> it's supposed to be because of Homura? Does Madoka keep amassing her power throughout the timelines or something? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Well, more or less. Ooh, this shot. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have expected QB to go mufu there. Mm hmm So the power of Madoka from all timelines is amassing in the current Madoka. Yep, yep, yep. And also why she had a vague recollection of Homura. <laughs> you did well, Homura. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a backfire, isn't it? Although, not necessarily. Depends on how it's used, right? If Madoka does become a witch, then sure, Homura fucked up. But if Madoka's power manages to save everybody because of her wish being so powerful. That's a possibility, isn't it? Uh, also, someone told me in the comments that the opening is indeed sung from Homura's perspective. And the kiss and the marriage of two Madokas now makes sense. Past, Moda past Madoka merging into current Madoka, essentially. Kind of a deal. The one thing I have left to guide me. Look how happy they all are. <laughs> you almost wish it was a different magical girl show. Yep. <laughs> yep, yeah, Sayaka's fucking dead. Up next is the weather forecast. Valpurgis knocked with a side with a side of rain. Uh, 
the chairs everywhere. The harsh shadows and what's going through her mother's head. Yeah. Hello, Cubey. Yeah. Ah, right. Humans aren't all that... don't have all that much worth for incubators, do they? Livestock witch! <laughs> True. True. Kinda. Mm, kinda, sorta. Oh, history lesson. And cinematic bars immediately. Cleopatra. Uh, Jean d'Arc. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, arguable. Okay, so is it like mundane wishes are safe, but big wishes aren't? Like if I wish to get a piece of cheesecake in exchange for becoming a Mahu Shoujo, that's just gonna be a safe wish. But if I wish for the end of global famine, that's gonna cause a disturbance. Again, Cuba with the technically not incorrect view. Utilitarian to a fold, but not strictly incorrect. Okay, so we're all just a little bit mentally ill. <laughs> hmm. Right, someone made, made a wish Og wants to be warm, and thus fire appeared, for example. Huh. I love the lighting here. That's creation of Adam.
Why are we focusing on them? Yeah, stands to reason that she would notice. Sure. Yeah, that is the creation of Adam. Or Adam, or however you want to pronounce it. <clears throat> the only person that she can talk about things to, really. I love how out of this world Homura's space is. Floating images, swinging guillotine blade. Very much so, yes. The entire world, actually. Hmm. Yeah? No, we can't. Bit of a sting. Keep yourself together. True. She is from a different timeline. Okay, at least she shows a little bit of emotion. That's good. Like... For her own well-being, honestly. Being able to show at least a little bit of that. You gonna reciprocate, Madoka? Okay, so we're getting a clear explanation. But in truth, we've known each other for years, if you sum it all up. Your first and only friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after this many years looping, who am I anymore? Right, the mental age is also much more than her physical age. We're never showing that plague hole, are we? It's always cut off on the left, ever so slightly.
Valpurgisnakt. Hmm, I wanted to say for a moment that it's probably for the better, because they might just survive the Valpurgisnacht, but can you hide from witches in a shelter? Oh, that would have been, like, the perfect place to end, but no, we still have a few more minutes. That shot looked like we were dealing with two Homuras. But no, it's just a single one. That's a whole circus. And the big witch. Countdown to Valpurgisnacht. Gears, like at Homura's place. She's prepared. Unlimited RPG works. Yeah, shoot one, stop, shoot, stop, shoot, stop, shoot, stop. And unfreeze. That did barely anything. Yeah, that's not doing anything. Oh, that's a bunch of military vehicles. I guess when you have time-stopping powers, stealing a bunch of things like that is not an issue. Still not an op, is it? Still not enough. Uh, are conventional weapons simply ineffective against Valpurgisnacht? Madoka made up her mind. Meduka is gonna become Meguka. To save you. Yeah, she can always rewind. And the sun can cost fallacy. Mm-hmm. Yep, she needs to 
force herself to have hope. To become a Mahu Shoujo. Can she really not talk about it? Is there a rule about not talking about magical girls? Maybe it was introduced in like early episodes, but I don't recall. arguable although in this particular instance Madoka isn't being misled she's going off her own wishes and of what uh, Homura told her. And Homura didn't lie, so... Oh, well that's no bueno. It's rewind time, or is Madoka gonna save the day? Right, there's that as well. Okay, that's gonna destroy her resolve. And the jam is getting darker. Is she gonna turn into a witch? Or is Madoka gonna be here in time? There we go. How did you make it up here, Madoka? Are you already a magical girl? It doesn't matter, does it? That's exactly what happened in the previous episode. Kinda sorta. It was Madoka down on her knees, and Homura turning to her and saying I'm sorry and going off to fight Valpurgisnacht. Parallels, parallels, everywhere, parallels. So now, that leaves us with a question, what's gonna be the wish? 
And also, why is my camera so dark? Can I, like, reset the white balance this way? More or less. I really need to order myself a couple of light sticks to wave at endings like this. <laughs> Look how happy they all are. My very best friend, indeed. All those ending shots with everybody being happy and having fun and whatnot kind of makes me wish uh, Madoka got a bit of a like light-hearted spin-off. Uh, kind of like uh, Prisma Ilya. It's a spin-off to fate. That's all just uh, haha funny Yuri shenanigans. Right? Kind of makes me wish for something like that. I even if, like, in like super deformed art style or whatever, uh, but that would be a big departure from the theme of the theme and the vibe of the entire franchise, really. So then again, you have something like Isakai Corte, and nobody has issue with that. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but the same, but the same way that I would like to see. Uh, what was I talking about? Cooking show. Yeah, cooking show in the world of um, uh, Symphogear. I would love to see uh, something like that in the world of Madoka Magica. Probably a vain hope, but oh well. Man can wish, right? Man can hope. That's not the correct term. Uh, okay, the correct term, however, is... Uh, let's watch it again, shall we? That's gonna... That's... Great segue, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I love the space Homura is living in. I just noticed. The benches are shaped like a clock. Right? Those brown benches around are the hours. Then you have those two long brown benches that are the hands of the clock. I just noticed that. Damn. <laughs> but yeah, I love how absolutely surreal this space looks. All those pictures floating in the air, you could explain that more or less with like holograms that are used in this world. Uh, but then there is this whole mechanical mechanism suspended up in the air. We never see where it's attached. We never see the ceiling. But it's there. And yet it's stationary. It's a bunch of gears that we expect to move, but it never does. We don't see any distinction between the walls and the floor. It's a completely blank, white space. Uh, like, uh, where was it? I think in the Matrix, there was something like that, a space similar to this one. You have the pendulum that has no business looking this sharp, does it? And yet, it does. And yet, we never see it. We only ever see the shadow. The looming shadow of a threatening time. That's how I look at it. Maybe I'm starting to overanalyze everything. But it's just a shadow. We never see it. And yet, it looks like one of the traps you would see in Indiana Jones movies or in some games or whatever, where a pendulum with sharp blades is swinging back and forth. It fits the theme of a clock, the clockwork at the top of the screen, uh, Homura's theme of time, time being everywhere, omnipresent, everything revolving around time and timelines here. Yeah, the, the shadow of a danger that comes from the clock, from time. Seeking the outcome you desire. 
I couldn't comprehend why Kaname Madoka, who led an ordinary life, you travel through time for just one purpose to protect Madoka. All the timelines were centered around Madoka. And that ended up linking Madoka to the current timeline. The common thing about all the timelines was Madoka. Everything converges on her. Every single instance of Madoka from every single timeline is connected in one place, to one person, to Madoka. Her, like, essence, the core of her being, is no longer separate between timelines. She's connected. All of, in all instances of Madoka have converged. That's... On one hand, it sounds like complete and utter bullshit, on the other, it sounds kind of reasonable. <laughs> it sounds kind of reasonable for what we uh, know about the world of Madoka Magica. That, yeah, you know what? If the emotions of high school girls can prevent the heat death of universe, why the fuck can't different versions of a person converge into a single timeline? I'm down. I don't mind it. Uh, in general, something I noticed... And um, some comments to the previous episode also helped me help helped me notice that is that um, this series Madoka Magica really wants the viewer to take many things for uh, at face value, right? Like um, in the uh, in the um, mm, flashbacks to uh, previous iterations that Homura had, we had a situation where uh, Sayaka turned into a witch. Why? There was Mami there, and Mami was fighting alongside them against Sayaka, so why would Sayaka turn? I don't know. Doesn't make sense. But it also doesn't matter. What matters is the effect of having to fight against Sayaka and Mami breaking due to that. Right? And uh, this is also kind of the same thing. Uh, that we would... Not maybe want or need a proper explanation, but rather, even without needing a proper explanation, it's not required. It, we're not expected to, like, fully understand it on, like, the basis of quantum mechanics or whatever. They're telling us, hey, yo, this is how it is. That's how it is. That's how it's gonna be. And uh, Madoka being this dance of a show kind of contributes to that. They don't have any other way to go about it, do they? They can't have a scene where two characters are sitting and throwing exposition at each other. Because the denseness doesn't allow for that. We can't exactly have particularly much, like, environmental storytelling. We do have plenty of that, but it's never, like, uh, supplementary storytelling, it's always relevant. It, there isn't any space for the the supplementary things that you might want, that you might see in like, I don't know, art book, for example, or in an interview with the showrunner, um, which the fact that uh, Homura went through a hundred iterations, for example, is something that was said in an interview. Um, and perhaps in other interviews, in other material, in like Blu-ray booklet or something, there were also other um, other things that simply didn't make it to the show. Uh, that was a lot of time talking about nothing. <laughs> so let's progress. Everything you did was for her. Indeed it was. Is this the looming, zooming show shot of Q-Bay? I don't think so. No, I think it was previous shot of Q-Bay. That had this, like, uh, what's it called? Kubrick shot, I think, of a face. Where it gets, like, outstretched and... You know what I mean. You know which shot I mean, for sure. The opening. Yeah, past Madoka and future Madoka. 
converging and merging together. Frills between the legs can't be comfortable, can they? No matter what happens, I won't give in. And that's kind of a downfall, kind of, sorta. Not really, but we later hear about how holding up hope might not exactly be necessarily the best thing to do. Sack's funeral. And we just go immediately to weather forecast. Without even stopping for particularly long at that. The chairs looming everywhere, the super harsh shadows. Super harsh shadows everywhere. If Iofka Shino Uta has a masterful use of light, then Madoka Magic has a masterful use of shadow. It really does. I wonder why we're bringing uh, Madoka's mother so much in this episode. Hmm. It has to have a purpose. Again, Madoka is an incredibly dense show. There aren't scenes that don't serve a purpose. Throughout this season, besides like the first few episodes, we kind of would be hard-pressed to remember that Madoka has a family, that she has a brother. I honestly forgot that she has a baby brother. Genuinely. So is it like bringing up that fact again to create a bit more of stakes? I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Very often in uh, like Super Sentai shows or uh, Magical Girl shows or other shows where uh, the high school kid has some alternate uh, life that they lead and uh, save the world unbeknownst to their parents, you usually don't focus on that like real world, real life. So the stakes usually are, am I going to lose or am I going to win? Am I going to save the world or is the world going to be destroyed? Very impersonal, all things considered. When you bring a family, you bring parents, you bring baby brother, it suddenly be the stakes suddenly become very personal, right? Like, sure, the world is at stake, but, more importantly, Madoka's baby brother is at stake. Right? Like, sure, Madoka is going through all this emotional and mental turmoil, but so are her parents. They're also being affected. Yeah, it, it increases the stakes, increases the, the heaviness, the weight of, uh, of everything that's happening. I think that's the goal here. I'm not 100% sure, perhaps Madoka's mother is gonna play like a key role in the finale, I can't know that. But right now, what it serves to do is to raise the stakes and increase the weight of whatever is happening. Uh, wait, was that the, sh the shot of Kyubei's face growing? No. It's not really that surprising. Do you ever feel guilty about what happens to livestock? Yeah, you're not all that different than livestock. You serve a purpose. Just like livestock does. Sure. You are... And again, sure, you're slaughtering all the chickens and... Uh, and pigs and whatnot, but in exchange they get to prolong their existence as a species, right? And uh, that's the same thing with humans. They are necessary not for food, not for their milk or their eggs, but for increasing the uh, lifetime of the universe. And... Uh, 
because they're necessary, they're also getting help from the incubators. Very similar. Wouldn't you say that's the ideal symbiotic relationship? It is, kinda. Ideally, a symbiotic relationship doesn't end with uh, one of the symbiotes killing the other. That's usually not how symbiosis works. But, yeah, to that point, it is. Or if you're talking about, like, milk cows or chickens that just lay eggs, then sure, I guess. We're not perfect at it, we at least negotiate with you as sentient beings. Hard to call the negotiations when uh, not everything is known to one of the sides that negotiates, is it? But it's not entirely wrong either at the same time. There is a bit of conversation, there is a bit of do you want that? Right? Do you want to be a cow kept in captivity and milked for for your milk? Right? There is an element of consent there. So, half truths, half lies. No, not even half lies. Half truths. Just half truths and lies of omission. Also, I love how Kyube is essentially one of the plushies on Madoka's shelf. Fire, thanks to incubators. Og wished for fire to appear, so fire appeared, and Og's whole uh, uh, tribe is happy because fire. Right? Cleopatra wished for Egypt to do good, and Egypt was doing good. I don't actually know if Egypt was doing all that good, uh, good under Cleopatra's rule, but I'm just assuming, right? Or she wished for eternal beauty, or she wished for, I don't know, alliance with Rome, or whatever it was she wished for. She got that wish. This is something burning. The burning of Rome? I don't know, I'm not sure. And those red beads are just Cuba's eyes, aren't they? That's Jean d'Arc. Also had a wish. Now this is interesting. No matter what their hopes were, anything that goes beyond reason will without fail cause some sort of distortion. It's only natural that this would result in a disaster. Huh. Again, makes me kind of wonder about the nature of the wishes. Is it, as I mentioned during the uh, runtime, if I wish for a piece of cheesecake to appear before me, or if I wish for my tea to be magically refilled, and uh, that's enough, then that's not gonna cause too big of a distortion, and that's not gonna have any tragic consequences? I don't know. If you consider a natural consequence like that to be betrayal, hard to call it a natural consequence when it's something that humans don't have to deal with on a daily basis, is it? Like, you can call getting frostbite a natural consequence of going outside in a t-shirt and shorts. Right? You can call getting burned a natural consequence of touching a hot pan. You can't call interdimensional disaster a natural consequence of tearing up the fabric of reality and altering it, because that's not natural. For incubators, possibly. Not for humans, though. Can't be denied that their sacrifices have shaped human history. Yeah. The emergence of fire, all things like that. It was made possible by all those tears shed in the past. If we could, we wouldn't have come all the way to this place in the first place. To this planet in the first place. That's also true. That's also true. If there was another way, if 
incubators themselves have emotions or some other sort of energy that can uh, counteract entropy, they probably wouldn't have issues sacrificing themselves. Honestly, they're utilitarian to a fault. But they didn't have that possibility, so they had to come here. Well, not here in particular, but they had to look among the stars for a, um, for a race that would be able to achieve that. None of you had ever come to this planet. You'd probably still be living in caves. Yeah, so that kind of takes away the possibility of the wish being uh, I wish incubators never appeared. You probably wouldn't want that. You probably would want to rather alter the rules of the game instead. And I have a feeling that's what Madoka is going to do with her wish. I can't be 100% sure though. The duality of color, red on the left, blue on the right, Adam on the left, God on the right, both hidden in the shadow. I wonder what this scene is about, what this moment is about. I don't know how Madoka is taking it, I don't know what my daughter is up to. Hmm. Does it again serve as a reminder that, hey, it's not just magical girls in their own clique who are risking their own lives, there's people around them. There's people around them that care. There's people around them who would be devastated if something happened to them. It's not just a matter of, oh no, Madoka is going to die. It's a matter of, oh no, Madoka is going to die and her teacher is going to be depressed about it because that's the second student of her that has died. Her mother is going to be devastated. Her father is going to be devastated. Her brother is going to be devastated. Her friends are going to be devastated. That's what happened with Sayaka. Right? Even her friend, the girls can't club girls one, whose name I forgot, sorry. Uh, she isn't taking Sayaka being dead well, because sure they had a bit of like rivalry for a boy, but she wouldn't be fine with Sayaka just being fucking dead, would she? And what she's feeling like right now, was it me taking Kyosuke away from her? Well, was that what pushed her over the edge? Was that what pushed her to run from home and commit suicide, right? I think that's what all the scenes, that's the purpose all the scenes serve. To show us that it's not just Madoka, not just Homura, but there's a bigger picture. Raising the stakes, raising the importance, raising the weight. Two of you are teaming up to take down a witch. Neither of you could handle it alone. Doesn't need to hide itself from a barrier. The witch just merely appearing is already going to kill thousands. So I know. Don't you fucking dare, Madoka. Sure, of course Homura just agreed that she wouldn't lose face, of course. She's lying to herself, lying to Madoka. This scene, it, it really shows a lot of Homura. Right? Grit her teeth, clenched her fists, turned around. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. I I'm gonna keep it bottled up just a while longer, right? I, I need to have resolve. I can't fall apart right now. Don't know how to tell you what I really feel. And yet she can't help that. Not even living in the same time as you. 
embracing her and telling her everything. She came from the future to save you. Feelings also drifted further apart and my words don't reach you anymore. Yeah, because Homura has changed throughout all those iterations, right? It's kind of like two friends who drift apart when they're separated and uh, go through different walks of life. Sometimes happens, but that's exacerbated by how traumatizing it was the time that Homura had to spend. And comparatively, Madoka hasn't changed. Madoka at the beginning of the timeline is the exact same at the beginning of every timeline. Homura isn't. Homura acquires and amasses the knowledge and the experiences of each and every single timeline. So of course they would be drifting apart further and further. Homura is no longer this nerdy, shy girl who was so super happy at Madoka being her first friend, right? She's a grizzled veteran, and she's probably 20-something by now, mentally. But it's alright if you don't understand. All that matters is that I understand, and that I can save you. That what, that's what matters to me. Maybe you don't know anything about me. Maybe you don't even realize that I will save you. But I still have to do it. And that's what matters. Also interesting how in every single shot that we see this plague, it's always cut off. Just, I wonder, does it have some significance? Just this kanji being visible in the shot. Does it change the meaning of her name or something? If you know Japanese better than I do, which you probably do, tell me if that's actually the case. I'd be curious. Here comes a hurricane. Well, they think it's a hurricane, but it's really uh, the big witch. The witch bitch. And a whole circus with her. Valpurgis Night. Countdown. How nice of the Valpurgis Night to create a countdown. Henshin. Henshins in Madoka Magic are really short and to the point, aren't they? I think it's mostly because it's... It is a magical girl's show. But at the same time, it's not. If you catch my drift... The magical girls part isn't really that important here, is it? If it was just not necessarily having the henshin, having the transformation, but you get just magic powers that you can just use, you can shoot lighting out of your hands, and that's it. There's no henshin, no uh, costumes, no nothing. It wouldn't change it that much, right? So it makes sense that henshins are there to, like, make everybody believe that it's a Maho Shoujo show, but in essence, it's not really. Unlimited RPG works. Everybody in Madoka Magica loves their unlimited X works attacks, right? Mami had unlimited flintlock works, Sayaka had unlimited saber works, and Homura has unlimited RPG works. Is Madoka gonna have unlimited bow works? Wouldn't surprise me, honestly. But yeah, I still do very much love uh, Homura's utilization of um, of her time, tiny whiny powers. Stop time, shoot, shoot, shoot. All the projectiles stopped in time, restart time, all the projectiles hit at once. But it's not enough. Blowing up some pillars. Are those papers important? I don't know what it says. So maybe, maybe not. Who's to say? Collapsing the pillars. Driving a tanker into her. How is she controlling that tanker from the outside? I don't know, but I don't care. Because it's fucking dope what she's doing right now. 
some military grade artillery walls and walls of c4 mortars everything 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 was not enough ultimately it wasn't enough So much preparation wasn't enough. You need more magical girls. You need at least one more. Just so happens there's a candidate around. Although it kind of makes me wonder, like in in world, can't there can't magical girls from like neighboring cities? come over to fight Valpurgisnacht. Like, you'd think it's a place where you can maybe get some really big uh, gem, not gem, um, grief seed, or a lot of grief seeds, or something like that. Or, I don't know, what if Valpurgisnacht destroys this city? Will it move to the other one? Maybe we should stop it early, and all the magical girls from the entire prefecture, maybe, should arrive here to fight the Valpurgisnacht. Uh, but it's completely besides the point. It's just my, essentially, what if. No point in me trying to convince you, indeed. Why does she push herself so hard to fight? Okay, what did Kyubei answer? She still hasn't given up hope. Yeah. She'll continue to repeat this meaningless chain of events and never be any the wiser. The moment she believes that everything was pointless, that your fate cannot be changed. She will succumb to despair and become a grief seed. Yeah, so she has to hold on. She has to keep on keeping on. Essentially, she has no other way. She has to force herself to hope, or else she will turn into a witch. Because the amount of grief from a re realization that all of it is pointless would just immediately snap her into a witch. So she can't allow herself to even entertain the thought. Just like every other magical girl throughout history. Resolve. Wiping off her tears. Here comes the mom. Here comes the slap. Yeah, it really drives the point home that there are people caring about Madoka. There are people hurt of hurt. Um, there are people who are hurt because of Madoka's actions, who don't want to see her hurt, and who are completely clueless to what's going on. It really is raising the stakes so incredibly high. Much higher than just individual risk, right? Again, I think it's like the third time I mention it, but it's the third time uh, we're shown something that is supposed to have this effect on us. Increased, increases the weight so incredibly much. But yeah, why can't Madoka exactly tell her mother about what's the deal? I don't know. Like, sure, there's the obvious answer that her mother won't believe her, but something tells me she would have. Honestly, hard to believe, but kind of makes sense. In retrospect. Is there any rule about not telling civilians, quote-unquote, about magical girls? I don't know, I'm not sure. He said, I grew up to be a good girl. Do you still believe that? Yep. Just a simple question. Are you sure you're not making a mistake? I'm not. Okay, go. Boundless trust between them. 
boundless trust. And uh, that really has an effect on me. That really makes me all the more anxious. Because what if Madoka is going to die? What will her mother feel? Right? It really, it not just drives, increases the stakes and drives the weight, uh, but also gives us a bit of that post-defeat world, so to speak. Because again, usually in shows, when the main character gets defeated, for whatever reason, that's essentially that, right? If our main hero gets killed by the demon lord, the hero is dead, uh, the world ends, the story ends. Simple. But in this case, if Madoka dies, her parents are gonna grieve. There is story after failure. The world keeps existing after failure. Assuming, of course, Madoka doesn't turn into a witch, because then the world just ceases to exist. But... Yeah, the story of this world, of this family, of those characters, doesn't end with the moment Madoka dies. They continue in misery. To stop it right here. But alas, it can throw buildings around. Uh, for a moment, I thought here... Yeah, I thought here that she lost her shield, that she's gonna get disconnected from her gem real soon. Uh, but no, she does have her shield. It's just hard to do, hard to see because it's the same color as her hair. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, she still does it. But she's slowly, slowly starting to succumb. If I fail here, Madoka dies. If I I can't win, that's just not a possibility. If I rewind, Madoka's gonna gain power. It's gonna keep being harder. Madoka's life is going to be harder. There is no way, there is no, there's nothing I can do right now to make things good. I can't win it now, and if I can't win it now, then if I rewind... Winning is going to become even harder. Because that's another layer of karmic whatever bullshit converged onto Madoka. And that's her gem darkens. But Madoka ex machina. How did she make it here? I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it just doesn't matter. What matters is that she's here. She single-handedly saved Homura from becoming a witch. And then she's going to become a magical girl herself. Girl, 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 girl. <laughs> and then she's going to become a magical girl herself. Her thigh highs glowing, Kyubei glowing. Parallel to one of the timelines. Homura chan, I'm sorry. Is it a parallel, or is it exactly what happened in the original timeline? I think it's both. I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both. Ah, oh, fuck, I missed the... Uh, the talk, bit of a talk at the end. Okay, okay, okay. Someone says it's wrong to have hope. I will tell them they're wrong every single time. I know my determination will never waver. My very best friend. Finale, my very best friend. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, 
I honestly thought we're going to start the final battle, quote unquote, in this very episode. But we really are keeping it for the finale finale. I really thought that in this episode, Homura is going to die, Madoka is going to become a magical girl, and uh, then they're gonna fight, and uh, then they're gonna fight a little bit more in the 12th episode, and then like the second half of the 12th episode is going to be showing us the um, fallout of what happened. Fallout of the battle, fallout of what they were doing. That's not what they're going to do. And it makes sense from the standpoint of what Madoka Magica is as a show. It's not about flashy combat, although that exists in this show, but if there was a show that would resolve the big bad situation, or that would kill the last boss with just a single word, it's Madoka Magica. They don't need two episodes for the finale, because it's not going to be solved with stretched, prolonged combat of Madoka shooting a volley of arrows at the witch, and the witch deflecting and attacking, and Madoka evading, and then throwing some buildings around, creating shields, barriers, throwing hearts, uh, summoning fairies, and, you know, all the jazz, all the spectacle of that. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be straightforward. One attack, maybe a couple, maybe a volley, but not a prolonged fight. Because Madoka isn't an action show. It is, to a degree, but at its core, it's psychological horror. Hmm. I only wonder if we're going to see the fallout. Or are we going to end on the witch is dead, the wicked witch is dead, roll the credits? Or are we going for a very bleak ending where everybody dies? The witch, Madoka, Homura. Or perhaps the witch and Madoka, but Homura is left alive. That's a possibility. And the fact that we were driven that the point of Madoka, his family... And they care about her very much, and the death of Sayaka affects so many people. Makes me kind of afraid that we're going for Madoka dying and Homura having to live. That makes me question, though, would Homura rewind, or would she not? Or will Madoka make a wish to fix everybody and help everybody but herself? It can go in so many different directions that I'm genuinely unable to predict anything. Hmm. We really are leaving Madoka being a magical girl to the very last moment, aren't we? Like, when I came into this show completely blind, and with the opening featuring Madoka in her Maho Shoujo getup so much, I was under the impression that she's going to turn into a magical girl and they're gonna fight and it's gonna follow the usual progression of a Mahu Shoujo show. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I thought that maybe in this episode she's going to transform. Boy, was I wrong. They really are keeping that for the finale, finale, finale. I don't think I have anything more to say about this episode, really. Uh, it was a lot of confirmation of what we've learned from the previous episode and from episodes past. Like, explicit confirmation. If you didn't manage to figure it out yet, then here we're gonna tell you how it is straight. Uh, a lot of setup for potential tragedy. And... 
And I think I'm going to watch the finale right now. I think I'm going to watch the finale right now. I was supposed to record Symphony Reaxis, but I can record that later. <laughs> right now I'm going to record the finale. I usually don't, because I like reading the first wave of comments. Maybe I missed something, maybe not. But this time around... I'm sorry, I won't be reading your comments to this video. Leave them, still, it matters for YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna be watching the finale right now. Uh, if you wanna watch the finale, it's gonna be up on Patreon. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be it. Uh, if you have something to add to this episode, to my reaction, uh, how did you like it, what did you think of it, my, this episode, my reaction, my theories, stuff like that, uh, leave that in the comments down below. Um, even if just for the sake of, I don't know, checking if I'm correct in the next episode. Uh, what else? Uh, no spoilers, please. Uh, I know that I'm going to be watching the finale right now, but no spoilers for, like, um, the movies, no spoilers for the spin-off. Uh, keep that of the comment section. You can join the Discord here, here, here. Also in the description, um, there's Madoka Magica channel, and you can talk about this show with spoilers there to your heart's content. Use spoiler tags, and that's it. And um, what else? Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases of not only Madoka Magica, but also Simple Gear Access, also uh, Tensei Shitara Kendeshita, The Sword Isekai, um, Novice, Alchemist, and uh, Gundam Witch from Mercury, and I'm gonna be releasing the um, Ar Arifureta OVA soon, and there's also gonna be other shows, live streams. I also live stream a little, uh, played Countryside recently. Gonna be playing more of that. Uh, so stay subscribed, click the bell, all that jazz. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon or Throne. Links in the description on Patreon for 10 bucks a month. You get early access to non seasonal shows like Madoka, like Sinful Gear, like whatever comes next. And for just a single dollar, you get a role on the Discord and you also get a place in the credits. On a throne, you can pitch in directly towards my purchase of better lighting, better camera, stuff like that. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, it's completely free. Uh, share my content, spread the word, it really does help the channel a lot. And with all of that out of the way, I think I'm gonna end it here. So uh, that's gonna be it from me for today. And as always, you guys do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers. And here's the credits I mentioned. You can be one of those people and you don't need to be a magical girl to fulfill this wish. <laughs>